In this Photoshop tutorial, I'll be showing you how I created a silhouetted dripping text effect without using any brushes, no manual smudging, the liquify tool, or using any textures. So this tutorial is part of the process I went through to create the dripping liquid Photoshop action that you see here, which you can download for free in the description. The first part of this tutorial, I'll go through how I created the zones where the drips will start forming from. And in the second part, I'll go through how I created the actual drip shapes. So here I have my text layer and I'll hold down control or command and click on that layer to make a selection of the text. Next, I'll apply that selection to a solid color layer here. And I'll just pick any bright color. I'll rename this layer to shape. Next, I'll duplicate this text layer here, Control or Command J, right click and rasterize the type. And I'll just rename this one to base. Next, holding down Alt or Option, I'll click and drag to the top to make a copy. And I'll rename this layer Blobs. Next, I will just click on base here and we'll just create a background layer here. So Control Shift N or Command Shift N, just create a new layer and holding down shift backspace that will open up the fill window here and i'm just going to fill this layer with 50 percent gray so now we've just got a bit of a, a background here next i'll select the blobs layer and holding down alt and the down arrow key when you tap the down arrow key it's going to create a duplicate layer while moving that layer down one pixel so i'm just going to tap it a few more times now i will shift select all of these layers Control or command e to merge them rename this one back to blobs Next, hold down Control or Command and click on the Blobs layer to make a selection of the layer. And I want to fill this selection in with clouds. So up to the Filter menu, Render Clouds, Control or Command D to deselect because now I want to blur these clouds. So Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we'll leave this at 15. I'll hide the Shape layer for the moment. So with this Blobs layer, we want to extract all the areas in black. And these areas in black will be where the drips start to form from. So if I go to the image menu, adjustments, threshold, it splits the image up into two colors, which is easy then for us to then extract uh, black. But the problem is, is that I want a more of a organic looking shape to the areas in black. And I don't want this jagged edge, uh, these jagged edges that you can see here. So we'll cancel that. And to fix this, I'll create a new layer. So Control Shift N or Command Shift N. And to fill an empty layer with your background color, my background color here is white. I'll hold down Control or Command Backspace. I'll move this layer below the blobs. Next, I want to merge these two layers, the blobs and this white layer here, onto a new layer, merge them together. So hold down Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E to merge those layers together up the top here. Now when I go back to the image menu, adjustments and threshold, we have a much better looking shape here. So I'll just adjust this around a bit and let's go with something like that. Next, I'll extract all the black areas from this layer by going to the select menu, color range, and just clicking anywhere where it's black. Click OK, and that will make a selection. Now I'll create a new layer. And to fill a selection in with the foreground color, which is black here, hold down Alt, or option and backspace. So now when I move this layer around, you can see we have uh, just those black areas isolated. So I can now delete these other layers and let's call this one now drip area or drips area. Let's turn the shape layer back on. So now we have the area where we want the drips to start appearing from. So the next step in this tutorial is to create the drips. So I'll create a new layer and I'll fill this layer again with 50% gray. So shift backspace, contents 50% gray. And we'll apply some noise to this layer. Filter, noise, add noise. And uniform, monochromatic. And the amount uh, will leave, I will increase to about 200. Next, I'll go to the filter menu. Go to filter gallery. And under the texture drop down, under grain, I'm going to apply the clamp to setting here and just max out these two settings. Next, I'll desaturate this layer, Control Shift U or Command Shift U. I'll apply some blur to it, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 
and I'll set this to around six. Next, I'll apply some auto levels to improve the contrast uh, in this layer. So Control Shift L or Command Shift L. And next, back to the image menu, adjustments, and then threshold again. And these areas in white will be the actual uh, starting shapes of our drips and also the location. So let's bring it to about here. We don't want too many drips, click OK. Next, I want to extract all these white blobs from this layer. So select color range and I'll just click on one of these white areas, click OK. So now they are all selected. I'll create a new layer and I'll just hit D to reset the swatches here and I'll fill this selection in with black. So Alt or Option plus back, Backspace, deselect. Now I can delete this layer here because now we have those little blobs extracted. Okay. Now the next step is that I want to restrict this layer here to the area of this layer. So to do that, I will just select the drips area layer, hold down control command and click on it to make a selection. Select this new blobs layer we just created here. And I'll, I'll just hit this mouse icon. So now we have restricted these little blobs to the area of the drips area layer below. So I'll just call this layer uh, drips. And I'll select the layer mask, right click, apply the layer mask. So the next step is to actually get these drips here dripping downward. So holding down Alt, and when I hold down Alt and hit the down arrow key, it will create a duplicate layer while also moving that layer down one pixel. So if I hold down Alt and hit the down arrow key roughly 40 times, you can see that the drips are starting to head downward. Next, I'll change this layer opacity to 70%. You can also just hit seven on the keyboard to adjust the opacity. And again, holding down Alt and hitting the down arrow key, I'll duplicate this layer roughly 15 times. Next, I'll hit four on the keyboard to adjust the layer opacity to 40%. And let's duplicate this one roughly 13 times. Next, I'll hit two on the keyboard, change the layer opacity to 20%, and I'll duplicate this layer roughly 25 times. Next, I'll hit one on the keyboard to change the layer opacity to 10%, and duplicate this layer roughly 23 times. Next, hit three on the keyboard, That'll change the layer opacity to 30%. And I'll just duplicate this layer three times. Next, five to change the layer opacity to 50%. Duplicate this one four times. Next, change the layer opacity to 80%. So hit eight. And we'll duplicate this layer just six times. And if I wanted these drips to be a lot longer, that very first round of duplication where I duplicated the layers roughly 40 times, I could have duplicated that say 100 times and then the drips would have been a lot longer. So I'll select this top layer here and go all the way down to the bottom here to the very first drips layer and hold, hold down shift and click on that layer to select them all. Control or command E to merge them all together and I'll rename, rename this one back to drips. So we have our drips layer and our drips area layer. Now I wanna work on the look of these drips some more. So I'll create a new layer and I'll fill this layer in white, move this layer below the drips, select the drips, and now I wanna do a merge visible. So I wanna merge everything everything that we see here onto a new layer. So Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E. Now I wanna apply a few filters to adjust the look of these drips. The first one being motion blur. So filter, blur, motion blur. And I've just applied a little bit here at 90 degrees. Next image adjustments threshold. Click OK to that. Now I'll apply a little bit of blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Two pixels is fine. Next up to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And I'll use legacy. And I just want to increase the contrast now uh, with these drips. So boost the contrast up. And if I increase the brightness, it starts to thin the drips out some more. So we'll go up pretty high. 
click OK, and now I'll apply a little bit more blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'll just apply two pixels again. Now I want to extract all these drips from this layer. So I'll go to the select menu, color range, and I'll just click on any drip here to select that color value. And I'll drag the fuzziness to 200. So we include all the gray values as well. Click OK. So we have a selection. I'll create a new layer and I'll fill this selection in with my foreground color, which is black. So Alt or Option Backspace to fill that in. Now I can delete these old layers that we don't need anymore. So the one below the old drips layer before we adjusted the look and this white background layer here. And I'll just rename this one drips because this is our new updated drips layer with the new look. So now when I zoom into an area, I want to improve the connection between the drip and the drip area. So I want the drip to kind of curve into the drip area here rather than just going directly into it. Okay, so it'll just make the effect look a bit more convincing. So what I will do is hold down control and click on the drips area. And then holding down control and shift, I'll uh, click on the base that will include our base layer into the selection. And I'll hold down control shift and also click on the drips layer. So that will add the drips layer into the selection. So we've selected those three layers, the drips, the drips area and the base. Now I'll go up to select modify smooth and I'll just smooth this selection at five pixels. So you can see that when I do that, it has started to create this curve between the drip and the drip area. Okay. But if you look down this drip here, it's, it's lost some of the selection. So I'll go through the same process while everything is selected to select these three layers again. So holding down control plus shift, I'll click on the drips. So you can see when I do that, it has included the drips back into the selection. I'll hold down control shift and click on the drips area and also the base. Okay, so I've got everything selected again, but it's kept that bit of curvature here. I'll go up to the select menu again, modify and smooth. And we'll smooth this again by five pixels. So again, you can see it's added more curvature. It's kind of brought this selection down a bit. It's added a nice curve here. But I again want to include the rest of the strip here and the original shape of the text. You can see the corners here, that's a bit lost. So I'll go through that process again, holding down control shift and then clicking on these three layers. One, two, three. So everything is included back into the uh, selection. And if I wanted to add a little bit of uh, curvature to the original shape of the text, I could just add a little bit more smoothing again. So select modify smooth, maybe just like two pixels. So you can see it's just rounded off that corner a little bit. Next, I'll hit control or command zero to zoom back out. I'll create a new layer, control shift N or command shift N. And I want to fill this new selection that we have in with a color. So black is my foreground color. So alt backspace or option backspace, deselect. Now I can delete the old drips layer, the old drips area layer because we have everything now on one layer here. So I will just rename this one to drips. So now let's zoom into an area and I'll just hide this shape layer for the moment. And you can see looking around this letter R here that there are some jagged edges as well as some blurred edges. So I kind of want these edges to be a bit more consistent. So what I will do is create a new layer and fill this layer in white, move this layer below the drips, select the drips and we'll go through that process again of merging everything that we see on the canvas here onto a new layer. So control shift alt E or command shift option E. So there's the merge. And I'll go to the image menu, adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'll use legacy and I'll just increase this contrast here to start to remove some of the blur from these drips. So if you look down the bottom here at this drip, as I increase the contrast, that blur starts to go. So let's increase the contrast, click OK. And then what I'll do now is go to filter, stylize, diffuse, oops, stylize, diffuse. So this will kind of remove those jagged edges a bit. And I might actually apply it one more time. So filter, oh, just up the top here, diffuse. So there we go. So now there's a lot more consistency with the edges around all our letters. So I'll zoom out, control or command zero. Now the final step here is to replace our shape layer mask. So if I hold down alt or option, click on the mask. 
So this is the mask here on the shape layer. We want to replace that mask with what we see here, okay, with our new dripping text. So I'll delete these excess layers, we don't need those. I'll turn on the shape layer, select the mask, right click, delete the layer mask, select our dripping text layer, and to make a selection of all our text, we go to the select menu, color range, select the text, so just click anywhere where it's black, uh, turn the fuzziness up to 200, and I'll turn this layer off, I'll just hide it, select the shape layer, then hit the mask icon, and let's now delete this gray layer, uh, we'll delete this base layer. We don't need original text. I might just create a new sh a new solid color layer here. Make it white. Delete our top layer. And we are finished. So this was part of the process I went through in creating this effect as a Photoshop action. That action is free and is linked to it down in the description if you want to download it. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.